My previous video in this playlist demonstrated interest rate parity with a numerical example. Now I would just like to follow up with a visual mathematical demonstration of interest rate parity and show you how it enforces an equilibrium solving for the forward exchange rate with a forward contract that causes us to be indifferent between two choices. That is to say, translating the base currency immediately at the spot exchange rate as opposed to waiting at the end of the period and using the forward price to translate. So I start immediately time zero today with 100 units of the base currency. I'll assume the base currency is euros and then interest rate parity says I ought to be indifferent between two choices because I expect at the end of the period to have the same number of quote currency units. My quote currency will be US dollars. And so my first choice is to translate immediately. And my second choice is to translate at the end of the period, I'll assume three years, using the forward price. And so I should expect the same number of US dollars at the end of three years. And what's this forward price that enforces that equilibrium so that I am in, in, indifferent and that there are minima, minimized arbitrage opportunities. So I start with 100 euros, the base currency, and if I go this direction, I exchange them for US dollars. If I do that immediately, of course, that's at the spot rate, and I'll assume the spot rate is 1.20 US dollars, hence the dollar sign, and we notate that perhaps counterintuitive to some of us, we notate that by starting with the base currency and then putting the quote currency second. So this indicates 1.12 US dollars per euros. If I translate my 100 euros, exchange them for dollars, of course, I would have 120 US dollars immediately. And then I let that grow or compound at the US interest rate, which I will assume is 3%. And let's do that over three years. And so that at the end of three years, I would have 120 US dollars multiplied by E raised to the 3% times three. I'm compounding continuously. So you can see it's E raised to the 0 0.09. And so that at the end of three years, I would have, it looks like, $131.30. That was my first choice. Translate at the spot exchange rate, grow at the interest rate associated with the quote currency. My second choice is to let the base currency remain. So I let the euros stay as euros and grow or compound at the European interest rate, which I'll just assume is 1% higher at 4%. So it will grow also at three years. And at the end, it looks like that would be in euros. So that's my euro symbol, 112 euros, 0.75. But I need an apples to apples comparison. So at the, that's at the end of the three years, I want to be delivering 112.75 euros and getting back US dollars. Now, in order to be indifferent, at time zero, I need to expect that the dollars coming back are equal to 131.3. So that's the interest rate parity tells me that this forward price, which is a forward exchange rate, and notice F sub zero means that it's the price or exchange rate that we lock in at the beginning. So we know the exchange rate here, and it's the forward exchange rate that makes us indifferent and therefore ensures that the euros we deliver will equal the same as if we went this way or 131.3 US dollars. Okay, so the math on that is straightforward, right? Because we're just saying we're solving for the forward price if on the left side, that's going down here, is equal to what's on the right side. Or mathematically, if we have on the left, 100 E raised to, you can see here, that's just compounding at the base currency. So R sub B is the base currency over the period time. And I'll just use the, so it's a little, a little simpler for me. I'll just use B to indicate the 
interest rate for the base currency, B times T on the left, but we do need to convert that at the forward price. And so on the right, that needs to equal 100 times the spot price times E raised to the quote currency times T, right? So these will be equal. That will enforce my indifference as of time zero, and we want to solve for the forward price. So the 100s can be canceled, and you can see the forward price then is going to equal the spot price E raised to the Q, again, is the interest rate for the quote currency, in my case, U.S. dollars, divided by E raised to the interest rate for the base currency, um, times t and then I can uh, utilize properties of the exponent right and we can see that this is s sub 0 e raised to the quote currency minus the base currency that's parens times t so that's my solution and then if I come over here and solve that for the forward you can see my forward price is going to be my is going to be equal to my spot price of US dollars, my spot exchange rate of 1.12, right, in the quote currency, multiplied by E raised to the Q minus P. And so my Q is the quote currency or 3% minus my base currency of, my base interest rate, sorry, that's my quote currency interest rate minus my base currency interest rate. So I have a negative 1% times the three years. So you can see next minute really I have here negative 3%. And it looks like that is going to give me 1.1645 for the forward exchange rate. This value here. This is the forward price that would ensure that after I deliver this amount of euros, I'm going to get back 131.3 US dollars and make me indifferent as to which choice I make. So that's the interest rate parity in a nutshell. Thank you very much. If you like this video, please subscribe.